Microphone, please. Matt Zinner. Um, he's online, but he's muted. Campbell. Here. Ray. Here. Kinney. Somebody needs to turn the mic on. Here. Brannick. Here. Pufal. Here. Stark. Here. Stendor. Here. Berlin. Peace. Supervisor Berlin, are you online? Yes, he is. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Miranda. Busse. Here. Mika. Mute. Vitek. Here. Huber. Here. Shooty. Here. Carl. Here. Wiener. Here. Murdig. Here. Ellison. Mackenzie. Here. Negro. Seventeen present. Say it. Hmm? Uh, next, we'll observe a moment of silence and then the Pledge of Allegiance. Their clock is full. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. The United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. I still need a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Motion by Kathy Schutte. Ron Stender will second. Second by Ron Stender. All in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. Thank you. I'll make comment per period. Um, if we have one, anyone in public comment, we have to limit you to three minutes per speaker, 30 minutes for everybody. Anybody for public comment? Anybody online for public comment? Last call for public comment. Hearing none, we'll move on to the regular agenda. Approval of the November 7th, 2023 County Board Minutes. I need a motion. Pat? Pat, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as presented in the January 23rd, 2024 County Board Packet. This is Brad Ray. I'll second that motion. Motion by Pat Kenny to approve. Seconded by Brad Ray. All those in favor say aye. Aye. I didn't have my mic on. Okay. <laughs> we got a 4B approval of emergency fire warden organization list. Marty, this is Marty Vitek. I I move that we approve the list. I'll second Marty's request. Motion by Marty Vitek to approve. Seconded by Kathy Schutte. Any questions? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. We we'll go to four C snowmobile alliance update. On November 7th, when we had our last meeting, 
<clears throat> it was brought up uh, that the alliance was looking for a loan for fifty thousand dollars to purchase another uh, Tucker snowcat for grooming. Uh, we had run into this. Uh, actually, it was a deal considering the the prices of the Tuckers and the price for this machine was one hundred and fifty thousand. <clears throat> With trading in other Tucker snowcats, uh, selling them, selling a backhoe, and uh, several other pieces of equipment, we were able to purchase that Tucker without getting the loan. And uh, I just want to let the board know that uh, the Tucker has been purchased. It's paid off. We have no loans as far as that goes, and that the Alliance is probably in the best financial shape it has ever been in. And I'll just leave it at that. Thanks, Ron. Any questions? Okay, moving right along, we'll go to the Ashton Chamber of Commerce 2023 wrap-up. Okay, Mary McFetridge is actually in Tucson, so she'll be here at the next meeting. Pardon? No, she's not on, online either. Oh, okay, okay. <clears throat> well, we'll forget about that one. Or e approve applying for EPA grant. Okay, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about this grant we're applying for. Um, for those who don't know, uh, this grant came out at the end of November and is due at the end of this month or beginning of February. It's a 10 to $20 million grant. And with that grant, it's 100% funded too. So there's no county money has to go into it. <clears throat> so what we're doing with that, the whole purpose is pollution reduction for this grant. So we will we are putting solar panels out at highway department along with a microgrid. Solar panels at HHS along with a microgrid. HHS currently subscribes to the solar farm out on Binsfield Road. So this will give them their own power. Uh, we're going to be putting solar at um, the sheriff's department who also um, subscribes to the solar farm. We have solar already on the courthouse building. Um, we'll begin leasing several electric trucks um, for the county use. We're also uh, <clears throat> going offer this grant up to all the municipalities in the county. So some of them are capable of doing it. Um, some of them can't. Uh, a good example is Jingles. The building's too small and it's surrounded by trees, so it can't get. It doesn't get enough sun. Um, but I know the town of Morse is in it, the town of Ashland, Sanborn, uh, and a couple other municipalities are involved in it too. Um, we'll be putting four high capacity, that's level three chargers at Bad River at the casino, and then electric charging vehicles up Highway 13. So there'll be one in Lake Butternut, one in Glidden or Mellon, one or two in Ashland. Um, so the EPA's doing this whole thing. Uh, Bill Bailey at Czech Renewables has been helping us with the grant. And we are just about finished writing it. And we're a lot, oh, in the city of Ashland. Um, um, uh, uh, Supervisor McKenzie, we're doing, what are we doing? The wastewater treatment plant, the breading center. Um, yeah, well, we're doing a bunch of stuff in the city too. <clears throat> and also MMC is getting a whole bunch of solar um, or Tamarack Health now. Uh, the, there's, the one for Tamarack Health will be before the meter. So um, all the money that they save will go into their endowment fund to help less underprivileged individuals get health care. And then finally, uh, Northern College is going to get a whole bunch of it too. And Northern College will serve as an emergency station for people who are put out of their homes due to inclement weather. So if we get like terrible flooding again, you know, and people can't get to their homes, this will be, Northern College will have the shelter for the people. 
or if we get tornadoes or something, whatever. Northern College will serve as the, the emergency shelter. So um, finance committee or, already approved this grant and uh, we're just asking the county board to approve submission. Um, there's no guarantee we're gonna get it. It's a highly competitive, but given the very fast timeline um, and the fact that batter was involved, we may well have a good shot at it. Um, it's, it's an exciting opportunity. Uh, we will have to hire some new people. However, those will be those people will be paid for by the grant. So um, we've already we're already planning to hire a grant writer, and we'll have to hire an energy specialist who uh, who will be paid for by the grant. And that job description will be going to the next exec committee. And assuming and hoping we get it. Well. Yes, George. Uh, move to approve the EPA grant as described, grant application as described. Motion by George Busset to approve the grant application. Clarence? I'll second. Second by Clarence Campbell. May I ask a question? Yeah, ma'am. please. Okay. I just have a question. I can't hear. I have a question before we vote. Okay. When you're talking about the electric vehicles this weekend, if you watch the news, it said they had the cold weather in Buffalo yep. and the lineup of electric cars trying to get them started because it was so cold that none of them were running. It takes too long to um, the electric vehicles in the cold weather. The batteries are not adjusted to that cold, cold weather. So when we're purchasing vehicles, make sure that that is an issue that is addressed before you purchase these vehicles we'll be leasing the vehicles and the grant will be paying for the lease okay but uh, and the vehicles will be stored indoors and the charge and like there'll be charges at highway department okay. in the garage where the vehicle will be stored overnight in the garage yeah and, um, then and that's a, that is a problem with cold and batteries right and i imagine in a few years that'll be that that part will be solved right it's a great idea, but just in the beginning, this is something that we need to address before that. And then the other one, thank you for the emergency shelter at Northland College, because with the 2016 flood in central Ashland County, that would have been great to have a place for people to go. There were people stranded for days. Thank uh, you, Dan. Yeah, and emergency management will be getting a vehicle too. Okay. And and so when they it then becomes a rolling battery, literally. So emergency responders and residents can actually charge the phones, charge lights, charge everything too with that. Thank you. Yes, Rich. I have a question too uh, about these electric vehicles. Um, how do you plan on, like you said, the Sheriff's Department, when it's it, at 20 degrees, they lose over 40% of the battery already. Right. So are you going to pay people to sit in their car for like three, four hours for the battery to charge if we're on the road? No. How does that I work? No, no, and highway departments can be the major one that gets the vehicles. Um, they will. They also they have other vehicles to use if the electric is if it's too cold. Okay. Uh, the major problem with electric vehicles is when they sit outside overnight in the cold and the batteries get freezing. If they're stored indoors in relatively warm temperatures, uh, they should be fine. But Mr. Busset, you have an electric vehicle. Um. So the Ford Lightning, which is a vehicle we're talking about, has a 400 mile range in summer weather, at least a 200 mile range in winter weather, especially if it's stored inside. So I don't see it as a problem. I've been driving an electric vehicle on our winters for the last three years. I've never had a problem. Thanks. All right. And BART has buses that are electric too. So there are some charging stations around. So. If they can operate a bus during the winter that's electric, I would think that we'd be able to, because they store theirs inside too, so. I'd like to say I'm 100% for this because we put in for it for our town hall, for our shop, plus an electric vehicle for the shop guys to use. So I think this is great if a power goes out, anybody has a medical need, they can come to the town hall and use it, so. I'm 100% for this. Any more comments before we vote? Hearing none, we have a motion on the 
floor to adopt the uh, application for EPA grant. I have a second. All those in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Aye. Who is opposed? No, you said aye. It was just a late aye. Oh. Okay. We go to 4F, Town of Sanborn update. Okay, so this one's today I have some good news on that. Um, Finance Committee already heard about this um, the other day. Uh, why can't I find, here it goes. So Joint Finance finally released our money. Okay. Uh, as you know, we've lobbied the legislature to make up for our back taxes that we had lost. Um, it was approved by, in the state budget back in July. And a week and a half ago, Joint Finance finally released our money. Out of the $2.5 million that we were supposed to get, um, we got $1.88 million. Uh, the, difference, the difference of 664000 uh, went to pay off the chargebacks for the school, uh, for the Ashton School District. Um, they also reserved uh, $400,000 for the chargebacks for next year. So the school districts will not, and the tech school will not have to pay any chargeback. They'll be using this appropriated money. Um, anything left of the $400,000 comes back to Ashton County. We still have to pay our our hundred fifty thousand charge back out of this. Um, so, all in all, it this does fall along with how the county board voted, and not wanting any of our taxpayers to have to pay any of the chargebacks. So, in that way, it's a win. Um, next biennium, I will be going to the state legislature to try to recover the remainder of the money. But for now, we're made mostly whole. The school districts are made whole. Towns are made whole, and we should, you know, at least there's a light at the end of the tunnel, and we're not in the negative anymore. So, um, just thought everybody would like to know that the state mostly came through for us. Uh, Dan? Yes, sir. Yeah, we had talked about this before. Now, this is apparently not, this is not a permanent solution. No, this is not a permanent fix. Um, and the legislature is well aware that the fix they made was just temporary. So we will be talking with the legislature about a permanent fix for the problem. I've also started a conversation with Senator Baldwin, Baldwin's office about an fe ongoing federal appropriation to help solve the issue in case the legislature does not step up. I can answer questions. I have a question. Uh, yeah. I'll throw it out there and you figure it out. <laughs> Since 2006, how much has the county paid toward uh, for the town of Sanborn? Well, the um, the tax issue didn't start until 2006, 15. Okay. The, that's when the DOR made their determination. Um, so it's been, it's roughly $2,538,668. From 2015. Thank you. So Dan, just so I'm understanding, and I think everyone, the real issue is that the budget for the town of Sandburn is no longer generating the same revenues to pay for those services. So they're going to the Bad River to make up that difference on an annual basis. And I just want to make sure, like, is that the solution long term that we're trying to fix that budget shortfall for that money that was revenues? 
for those services? Uh, the tribe is paying the town of Sandburg $90,000 this year to cover fire and emergency services. Um, that is a one-year deal. Whether or not that continues going forward is between the tribe and the town. Um, there is money in this solution here on the screen where the town is getting $247,000 to make up for the lost tax revenue. So, um, so the state is making up lost tax revenue for this biennium. That's part of the solution that the state has to work on going forward. How do they continue to make up that lost revenue or do they change the levy limits for the town or what do they do? Ultimately, the legislature is going to make that decision. So the good news is we are not paying for it anymore. So, so for Ashton County, that's a win. Um, again, the town and the state and the tribal have to work together. And we, of course, will help the town get as much revenue from the state as possible. I'll also note that the town of Sanborn taxes went down dramatically this year. Um, they went down 66% or so, it was. They're less than they were two years ago. Um, and the main driver of that is equalized value. Equalized value in the town of Sanborn dropped 85%. So their taxes dropped down dramatically. Um, that meant that the town's portion of the county tax dropped dramatically because county taxes are portioned throughout the entire county based on equalized value. Or, and then on the individual level, assessed value. What, and the equalized value equals the sum total of assessed value. And also the school taxes then dropped dramatically too because equalized value went down. So I, I did has spoken to the town clerk there and they expect taxes to stay fairly level now. Microphone, please. Thanks for the update, Dan. Uh, next, we need a motion to go into closed session. Ron will make a motion. We go into closed session. Motion by Ron Sindor. I'll second Ron's motion. Seconded by Kathy Schutte. Second by Mike. Okay. County Board of Supervisors will consider a motion to convene in closed session pursuant to Wisconsin 19.851E, deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business. Whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session and Wisconsin 19.851G, conferring with legal counsel for the governmental body who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is likely to become involved. We have a motion and a second to go into closed session. All those in favor? Oh, that's right. We need a roll call. Campbell. Yes. Ray. Yes. Kinney. Kufal. Yes. Franick. Yes. Stark. Yes. Stendor. Yes. Berlin. Yes. Miranda is absent. Say yes, Vitek, yes, Huber, yes, Shooty, yes, Carl, yes, Wiener, yes, I mean, yes, <laughs> Murdick, yes, Ellison, yes, Mackenzie, yes. Negro, yes, Metziner, yes. Okay, um.
Well, in the closed session, we uh, discussed the properties. What? What? Is everybody shaking their head for me? I do. Mm -hmm. Pat? I want to make a motion to authorize payment of $22,992.17 to Greg Burnett for full settlement and release of all claims related to the claim for surplus funds on sale of tax foreclosed property. Do we have a second? Ron Stender will second. Pat Kenny made the motion to approve, seconded by Ron Sindor. All those in favor? Question. Aye. Aye. No, before we vote, is there any questions? I have a question, discussion. Go ahead, Bill. Um, has any of the other claims in the state of Wisconsin been paid out? Point of order. We are. We already had that time. Um, we're not an open. Not an open session. Gary, yeah, yeah, Bill, we we have to yes. be really careful here because what's discussed in closed session should not be discussed in an open session. The motion's on the floor in second, and it's, it explains what happened. Um, we don't want to get into open session to start talking about other things that we discussed in close. We did not discuss this in closed. Bill, the motion's already been approved. It's time for the next but, agenda. But there's no discussion on the motion. We have a motion and a second on the floor to approve. It, it was already approved. There was a voice vote to approve it. Yeah, there was. Yeah. Are we ready to vote? You already did it. What? You already did it. Well, then what's the problem? I got something. Should this be a roll call vote or no? Right. Yeah. All right. You go to seven, right? Yep. Dan, my administrator update. Okay. Um. So I, I gave you two of my updates already. They were on the agenda. So uh, the final one is finance committee wanted me to let the entire board know that they approved forty thousand dollars, spending forty thousand dollars out of contingency money to fund uh, the nurse at the jail. Um, the jail has had very high health care needs lately, um, and so they want to increase the time the nurse spent there to make sure everybody gets better or more adequate health care. Um, and because the amount is under fifty grand, the finance committee can approve it by itself. So um, we are we are going to be spending more on that. It how much if we have to spend the whole amount is still in question, largely because we don't know what our jail population is from day to day. We could have people that come in who have high health care needs, and then they're released from jail, and then we get a population that has very little. They are, the jail is looking to if there's other providers out there that can provide better service at a better price. There's also been talk with Bad River about Bad River Healthcare providing healthcare to travel inmates. So that ha that's an arrangement that still has to be worked out um, that would be mutually beneficial to everyone. Um, however, of course, even then, that would be inmate by inmate. Some inmates 
who are charged, like those charged with a violent crime cannot be taken out of jail. It's that simple. So it's it's really going to be inmate by inmate and how it works. But for the time being, we're spending more money on, right? We have to spend more money on healthcare. Anyhow, I'll take questions if you have them. Dan, I, maybe this is the wrong time, but I would like to put something on a future discussion, not necessarily the next meeting, but at some point. Yeah. It, it, the board probably knows that a few years ago, we gave, I believe, $400,000 to Excel for the solar panel. Yes, we did. And it'd be interesting for the board to get a return on our investment update. On, on how we're doing because we were supposed to be getting credits. It, it doesn't yeah. have to be immediately, but at some point, so the board is aware that our investment is paying us back. Yeah, and HHS and the Sheriff's Department are both getting credits on their bills. Um, the county, the courthouse, and I can actually just show, show it to you. Um, we got to remember which document it is. Uh, this one. Yeah, here it is. So I can show you what the courthouse one is doing. So it all go back the six months. So um, we, like I said, we have solar panels on the courthouse. So if you look at this graph, the green line is everything the energy is being generated and the red is the energy being used. So we're still we're still paying for electricity here, but we're at least generating some of it. Um and I know the um HHS and Sheriff's Department get about a thousand dollars a month credit, but I can get you the exact numbers. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Else, Dan? Nope. Mike, you have a question, Supervisor? No. What I, what item are we on on the agenda? Uh, administrative updates. Okay. That's all you have, Dan. Yes, sir. County Board Supervisors. Okay. Dick. Mike. Uh, I just I gave everybody a copy of a letter that was sent from uh, the town of LaPointe to the county. There's, there's two pages, or there's two documents. One is a letter uh, that went to the sheriff, and the other is a uh, uh, a document that the uh, police chief from the town was at a meeting in Madison where it's a police chief's conference or something. And he presented uh, people in the legislature that second document that says, got any ideas? I just wanted to make sure that everybody is made aware that these, these uh, communications is uh, out there right now. And if there's any questions, uh, we, should, uh, we should address it. Thanks. Wait, Gary. Yeah, I... I thought this would be a good place to say something. Um, just in the last uh, 48 hours or so, I had an incident at my house that I had to call the sheriff's department on. And I wanna say that the call center, which I called first was great. Um, it took the information that they requested. Um, short period later, the deputy sheriff showed up. Um, the problem was handled professionally. I want to thank the Sheriff's Department for that uh, effort. And then uh, by last night at six o'clock, the problem was solved. Uh, the culprit uh, reimbursed me for the, the damages that were caused. And uh, I just thought people need to know that every once in a while the Sheriff's Department needs to have a good uh, idea. And what I went through, it worked out perfect. So I want to say thank you to the Sheriff's Department's employees. So thank you. Um, I just want to um, mention um, just in the area right now, people, the individuals come up to me because they know me through my daughter and they're homeless individuals. Um, there was no emergency shelter in Ashland 
in the city. There was one in Bad River, and they were telling me that tribal members were only um, admitted to those. It does say in other community members, so people, I don't know, you know, what their deal was or anything. Um, anyways, long story short, we still have people out there that are homeless. Mm -hmm. And also, um, one other issue is, um, I'm, thank you for the update about the Ashland County Jail nurse. And, mm -hmm. um, in the, in light of the incident that occurred in Vilas County, um, I can't make comment or anything about their situation, but I just wondered if everybody in our county and our area um, that are correctional officers know how to administer Narcan and have it readily available. Also um, wondering if we have any update on our opiate funding and if any of those individuals that are on individual boards or um, committees can bring up uh, the known um, area of in interest would be um, more sober living and more funding for um, healthcare services for mental health and drug related issues. Thank you. Uh, so Supervisor Frantic, um, yes, everybody at the jail knows how to administer Narcan. There's a ready supply at the jail and unfortunately they've had to do it too many times. Um, and have good practice at it. Um, we just received notice that the grant, we received an opiate grant from the state. Um, Health and Human Services has applied for it for the Sheriff's Department. We don't know the exact amount yet, so um, but we are getting it. So I was kind of hesitant to say something until we know the dollar amount. Um, HHS has also been looking at um, a, a sober living type situation a transition house for people who are addicted to drugs and a place for them to go while they're transitioning off. Um, I believe that's still under discussion. Um, and HHS will be continuing looking at that. And that we're, that, that's one of the proposed uses for our, our opiate funding. Uh, opiate funding settlements are still coming in. In fact, I just got an email this morning I haven't looked at yet about one. Um, so, at some point, we will have to decide what to do with our money, even though it's not a huge amount. Um, and I'll be honest, HHS wants some, the sheriff wants some, and everybody's going to want some. <clears throat> but yeah, and I believe there'll be more so settlements out there going forward. Um, we're just at the tip of the iceberg. Over here. I would have bet you. $20 five years ago, you'd never hear me say this, but I think it's time that we look at issuing tablets to the county board members. Yeah, um, I agree with that 100%. You know, it, it's getting with the updates. Uh, you know, I can't keep up with it at home with all my other systems. Um, also, you know, reviewing packets. Um, I, I think we could look at more stuff there. Um, the, the having a tablet. Um, they'd have administrative authority so that they could go in there and change whatever needs to be changed for us that we don't have to try and sort through it on Google. And I think with the reorganization coming up that you should seriously contemplate issuing tablets to each one of the, the, the board members. Yeah, Clerk Shitty and I were just talking about that a few weeks ago. Um, so yeah, I think that I think that's a great idea, to be honest. And the cost for government purchases of that stuff is, I mean, I just got a new iPhone. It was 300 bucks. So, I mean, I, an iPad is a couple hundred dollars. I guess I got a follow-up question on the documents that I passed out to everybody. Has um, there been any response from the, uh, either from Dan or uh, County Board Chair or Laura or Finance Committee to the, the letter that was sent on the 11th of January. Uh, the letter was addressed to Sheriff Zipke, so you'd have to ask him. But, but it was oh. copied to, uh, to you and uh, Dick and Laura and Mike Berlin. I, just, I mean, you all got it. I, I was just wondering if there's any of the meetings, if there's been any updates. Um, like I said, I'll defer to Sheriff Zipke. And when it's okay. dealing with law enforcement. Nobody, none of the other committees have responded. 
Okay. I have two issues I'd like to share with the board. The first one is recently in Ashland County, we had a drug overdose of two people mm -hmm. who died in their home. And Narcan was used multiple times to try and revive these people and it did not work. And somehow we have to keep after our young people to educate them about drug overdoses. What their friends are giving them is not what they're getting and they're dying immediately. So to the people working on the drug issue, please keep working on it because we are losing our young people at a very fast rate. Before you go, I can address that. Um, as most of you know, my son is in seventh grade and they just did a giant fentanyl presentation at the school, sure. warning all the kids about the dangers of especially fentanyl because that's what's the real killer here now that um, one of the people who died, they had cell phones at the house and they were missing when the police got there. They found them in Superior. Mm -hmm. So somebody in that house was with them when they died. And when they realized what happened, they took the phones and brought them to Superior. And the next thing, I can't believe I'm saying this to the board, but I am not running for reelection. I have family issues that are private and I was asked not to run for the county board and I had no choice. I didn't think, I didn't second guess it. I said, I will not run for county board. So I've enjoyed my 12 years on the county board. It was not my choice not to run, but I said to my mother, I won't run. Thank you. Microphone. I know the last static on the Hubbard Dam. Um, how's that coming along? Oh, um, yeah. So, Claire, you tell uh, finally signed an easement to that. So, um, highway department will be going in when weather permits, because obviously they can't go right now. Uh, when it, when it, everything dries up, and they're gonna go clear a road to the dam, and we'll start doing some of the work on it. Um, and they'll hire a contractor to do the work they can't do. And then next year, everybody along the dam, the most property along that area will get a special assessment for the costs. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I just wanted to say about a month ago, uh, I was driving behind uh, uh, Gordon Lake down in the town of Gordon, and I ran off the road in my car rolled over and I called 911 and in a matter of probably 15 minutes there were two deputies came from Price County so evidently the our our county had a good workable relationship yeah. with 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 um, with uh, Price County and the southern end so I just wanted to make note of that move to adjourn oh, can I make one, one comment before you do that move to adjourn <laughs> Thanks, Matt. I just wanted to let everybody know the next board meeting will be at Bad River. It'll be a joint meeting with the Travel Council. Okay. I'll make a second to adjourn. All right. They want to pose, can stay on their own. We're adjourned. Yes.